From the small town of Centerville, Tennessee, she began her career at 18 months old, singing and dancing. She grew up as a somewhat spoiled Southern belle with a desire to be a dramatic actress. But destiny led her to a career as a comedian in the Grand Old Opera. Sarah Ophelia Colley, known to millions as Minnie Pearl, at 28 thought she was destined to be an old maid until she married pilot Henry Cannon and appeared with all the great country western stars as Hank Williams, Elvis Presley, and many, many more. Please welcome Minnie Pearl. Good morning, Minnie. Right? How are you? Hi, <laughs> I'm just so proud to be here. I didn't know you all were going to show all those pictures. Oh, aren't they it's, great? It's out of your new book. I know. It's so nostalgic. That's a fun book, though. Well, thank you. I think it's a fun book. I never book. knew you had such a busy life, though. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. I, I've had a busy life. There wasn't life. any grass growing there, was there? No. I was determined to, to get out and see the world. And now I've seen it. And you did. And now I'll stay at home. <laughs> First thing everybody did when we got in here, you see this? Yes. They all wanted to know what the price tag, we well, always, the price tag, but how much? Oh, it's $1.98. It's never changed. <laughs> it should tell you something about my act. It That's one of a better. kind, though. <laughs> the only thing that hasn't been inflated, huh? That's Down right. in Nashville's Minnie's hat. That's right. I, I loved reading in the book when you were touring uh, as, a, as a young girl, I guess you were about 18, weren't you? you? Didn't you go to direct a play at a school and a mountain woman took you in as a boarder? That's right. Wasn't she the basis for your character? Yes, she was. She was adorable. She paid me one of the nicest compliments anybody's ever paid me. I stayed for 10 days in this mountain cabin with this old man and old lady. And when I left, she said, I hate to see you go. You're just like one of us. That is a compliment. You see, that's that. a real compliment, particularly in the country, because if you are like your kinfolks, well, then that's the best compliment of all. Well, mm. I was reading there, and you're from Centerville, but is there a grinder switch? Yes. There Where are, is it? It's three miles out of Centerville. Daddy used to have a sawmill, and they'd uh, take the cross ties for the railroad up the hill by Teamsters in wagons, and they'd load the flat cars up there because there was a steep grade on the trestle down there. And they loaded the uh, cross ties at the top of the hill, and it was Grinder Switch because Grinder's family lived there. Mm -hmm. But it's about gone now. They took the railroad uh, sign and uh, put it out at Opryland. They got a little monorail, a little little mm -hmm. railroad goes around Opryland Park. Now there's a Grinder Switch stop out there. So you know, you never know if you get to Grinder Switch. You have to let me take you. Oh, I'd you love to. Are you the only <laughs> one that? Can... It looks like you're sitting there holding a bouquet. <laughs> <laughs> a plate of hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> You worked with um, a man, didn't you start out really the first time at the Opry with Rod Brassfield? Well, no, he came in later, Eileen. He was uh, he was a part of an old, what they call, rep show. Are you familiar with that? No. Mm -hmm. You all are too young. I do. I remember. You remember? Yeah. Sure. They used Pepper to have story. traveling companies that would go around. They worked under a tent called Bisbee's Comedians, and Rod was, uh, uh, his brother, Boob, was the comic, and then Rod took over his comic. Then they moved him to the Opry. And I used to see him when I was in high school. They'd pitch a tent over in the schoolhouse yard, and I'd go over there, and uh, I'd go backstage, and I'd say, I want to be in show business. <laughs> and they'd say, no, no, don't do it, don't do it. And I wondered why they told me not to do it. Now if somebody says to me, I want to be in show business, I say, don't do it. You know, with all of the new country western singers and performers coming up, there is no one that's trying to replace Minnie Pearl. I wonder if that's because there's no way to do so. Oh, I wish that somebody would come along. I think we need more country comedy. Of course, we have it on Hee Haw. Yes, but the, the yeah, male. But, yeah, mostly male. Yeah, uh-huh. Well, I think, Eileen, that uh, probably women don't want to be comics, you know. A woman can be witty and clever, but most women don't want to be a buffoon. But your comedy is so based on real life, <laughs> isn't it? Well, yeah. I'm yeah, but, you know, in the, in the book, though, <laughs> we, you know, you're known as a comedian, and you're a funny woman, you're, you're just a warm human being, but the, the country western people, uh, the songs are sad, most of them, and a lot of them have had very sad lives, troubles. I mean, everything from alcohol to drugs, and yeah. just, uh, well, look at Hank Williams, Johnny yeah. Cash, a mm -hmm. yeah. whole bunch of them. What, what is it? Is well, it the pace? It's the pace, and then... Uh, Lots of times the private life has been so unhappy, you know. Uh, that's where Henry comes in, mm. my husband. <laughs> what a nice man. Oh, he's a nice man. He's funny. <laughs> well, when you, funny. you traveled with a lot of those big stars. Yes, I did. Did you see them going downhill? Yes. Nothing you could do about it? No. Uh, the, um, when, uh, when the lights go down and the applause is dead, the lights are out and the grease paints off, you've got to have somewhere to go, you know. You worked mm. with Elvis, too, didn't you? Yeah. And they, these these men never were able, apparently, to find whatever it took to uh, 
carry them over to the next show. So are you saying that the basis is a good family, a good well, relationship? Well, I think so, but I think that's true in any profession, don't you? I oh, mean, that's sure. Not just yeah, show but business. Elvis was such a good, I've, I've talked to people, he was so good to his friends, but he had so many of them. And they were always sort of like hangers on, you know, like boxing champions and Well, he like liked that. people around him, actually, but I don't think that he ever was able to uh, uh, reconcile himself to the, um, the pace, probably, as you say. And then, too, a lot of people get so many kicks, as they say, that they get jaded and bored. They've got every, everything they want, and they don't have anything else to find. You are such a giving lady. You work very hard for charity. I know this because <laughs> I spent a lot of time in Nashville and knew what you were all about. You work for Children's Hospital down there, don't yes, you? Yes, that's one of my favorites, the Humane Shelter and Cancer and Heart Association. I, I really try to... Um, we all try to pay our dues. I'm not by myself. We all do. You all do. Everybody does. You think this is uh, part of uh, what's something you learned along the way? And what you're talking about in your book? Is this a culmination of all of that? Probably, but um, I think, you know, more is said about, uh, as we were saying about the drugs and the, and the alcohol and the wildlife that show people live, more is probably put in the paper about things like that than is put in the paper about the quiet mm -hmm. things that people do in show business that are trying to, to be citizens. We stay on the road and we stay out away from what you might call a normal life. And then uh, when we come back home, a lot of us feel like that we should become a part of the community, which I've tried to do in Nashville. Oh, you are. <laughs> Nashville always been your home. I mean, you that area. Literally. Because I, I remember once I never saw a place like that. When we were backstage at the Grand Ole Opry, it seemed like there were no <laughs> guards. Anybody could walk out there. I know Organized I asked chaos. you who you were. Huh? Isn't that right? Well, it's pretty loose. J.R. of Dallas fame was there this <laughs> August. And uh, by the way, I gave him a hat. He wore it. Oh, did he? <laughs> is this before he was shot? Oh, just, yeah. This is after Maybe he was shot. Maybe that's why he was shot. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. John, be ashamed. I, I speak highly of you. <laughs> no, he, um, he came on the opera stage and he said to me, I came on with me and Roy Aker, who is my dear friend, King of country music. And he said, who knows what's going on here? And I said, nobody, <laughs> except the performers. Is that true? It really oh, yeah, is that just way? impression I got. You got a guitar, just walk out there. <laughs> it's great. It's uh, 55 years of chaos. 55 organized. years, but it's changed locations. How do you feel about that? Do you miss the old Well, house? I went down recently to make a documentary, and they took me down to the old house, uh, at the old Ryman Auditorium. And the sweet old ghosts came around, and mm. I spoke to all of them. Oh, the uh, the auditorium is in bad shape, Ryman Auditorium, but I still love it. But of course, we wanted our fans to be comfortable, and they're very comfortable in the new house. Oh, that's a beauty. It is. Nice it's spot. beautiful. Is there a difference between the performers today and people like Tex Ritter and uh, people that have gone before me? When you're talking about the ghosts, is there yeah. any was there any difference in in the kind of people they were? Well. Uh, We'll have to wait and see. These young people haven't lived that long. I think uh, this was a, 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 a group of people like Tex and Red, Red Foley, Foley and Rod mm -hmm. Brassfield and Jim Reeves and all these people mm -hmm. who would be sort of up in years now like I am. Uh, they probably had a, a devotion and concentration about the profession. I, I hope these young people have it. Some of them do already. Barbara Mandrell, for instance. Mm -hmm. Barbara has that discipline and that devotion and that real dedication to her career. But then she started back on Town Hall Party in California when she was 10 years old, 8 or 10. Isn't that something? Mm. That's yeah. one thing about well, country music. You can begin at a very young well, age. Well, look at Brenda Lee. Oh, she started there. Yes. Before. Well, what about looking at Dolly Parton? Well, you, you, you could look at <laughs> Dolly. What about that, John? I don't yeah. know. I just thought the fellas wanted to know. <laughs> She's one of my best friends. I love Dolly. What is she really like? She's adorable. She's funny, and she's uh, terribly uh, canny, smart. She is. Yes. She is. She knows what she's doing. Yes, she does. <laughs> and, uh, of course, um, she knows that the figure hasn't hurt her. No. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly hasn't.